J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Go South, Young Man. <laughs> Next Tuesday is Washington's birthday, and if you're having company or just want to dress up the family dinner, remember that Jell-O makes one of the grandest desserts you can serve. Jell-O looks so attractive with its bright, clear colors, and Jell-O tastes so grand with its delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor, a flavor that simply cannot be topped. It has a real fruit goodness that rivals the fresh fruits themselves, a luscious, satisfying taste that everybody loves. You can serve Jell-O in any number of ways, just plain or with fruit, nuts, or cream. But no matter how you serve it, and no matter whether it's a holiday or any other day, you'll always make a hit with Jell-O. Just be sure to insist on genuine Jell-O. Only Jell-O brings you that grand, extra-rich fruit flavor. So look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. Go South, young man, from the Cotton Club Review. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a man who celebrated his birthday last Monday, February the 14th, and his age was exactly... Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and just in time, folks. (laughs) Yes, sir. Wow. Oh, no, Don, I wasn't going to let you get away with that. Nobody's going to know how old I am. I was only kidding, Jack. I really don't know your age, but I am curious. Well, I'm not going to tell you. There are some things that even a buffoon holds sacred. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, come on now, Jack. How old are you? It's none of your business, and you might as well forget it, Don. My lips are sealed. Well, tell me just one thing, Jack. Are you between 40 and 45? La, 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 la. Well, uh, are you between 35 and 40? La, 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 la. Hello, Jack. What are you doing? I'm auditioning for my birthday. <laughs> you know, Mary, Don's been trying to find out my age, and I won't tell him. Oh, you're just like an old woman. After all, you're not a kid anymore. Everybody knows you're not close to Freddie Bartholomew. Well, of course not. Remember, I'm not close to George Arliss, either. <laughs> no, but he can feel your breath on the back of his neck. <laughs> Well, let him pull up his collar. Anyway, I'm not as old as you two think, so let's forget it. Well, I know one thing, Jack. You were in the service during the World War, so you can't be very young. Well, certainly I was in the service, but I had a lie to get in. You had to lie? Yeah. Yeah, he told me he was sick and they examined him. (laughs) Now, look, Mary, I didn't tell him I was sick at all. Well, then why did they examine you? Well, I just painted some spots on my face for a gag. (laughs) After all, Don, I'm a comedian. Mm -hmm. Tell them how you try to flatten your feet, too. Well, that's one thing I didn't have to do. My feet have always been like the state of Kansas. (laughs) (laughs) Except for an occasional bunion. (laughs) Well, is there anything else about me you two would like to know? Yes, how old are you? Well, there's one thing you'll never find out. Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jack, old boy. Happy 44. (laughs) 44? Now, you're just guessing, Phil. That's just a shot in the dark. Well, a bullseye's a bullseye, no matter how you get it. Now, wait a minute, Annie Oakley. (laughs) I will admit that my birthdays come along just as regularly as the income tax. But honestly, fellas, I'm only 33. Boy, what a deduction. Oh, I don't know about that. Listen, Phil, you're not much my junior, you know. How old are you? I'm 29. 29? That's all I am, and I don't even show it. Why, Phil Harris, you've been studying music for over 29 years. He don't show that either. (laughs) I agree with you, Mary. Say, Phil, by the way, uh, when is your birthday? 
I was born April 21st. Oh, April 21st, huh? Yes, and that comes under the sign of Taurus, the bull. Oh, you mean astrologically speaking. Yeah. You know, uh, astrology is a very interesting subject. Here we go, folks. Mary. So you were born under Taurus, the bull, eh, Phil? Yeah, it was shady there. <laughs> Well, that's an interesting sign, you know. Say, uh, what does that mean, Phil? Well, uh, people born under Taurus the Bull mm -hmm. are handsome, popular, and can't stand red underwear. Oh. You're a little slow on that line. You can read it faster <laughs> tonight, will you? I better be careful with this tie I'm wearing here, I don't know. <laughs> you know, Jack, I was born August the 16th. That comes under Leo the Lion. Oh, is that so? Well, that's funny. Phil comes under Taurus the Bull, and you come under Leo the Lion. Mary, what sign were you born under? Donald the Duck. <laughs> oh, that must be a new one. What does that mean, Mary? It means I'm beautiful, charming, and have webbed feet. <laughs> Web, oh, close your bill. <laughs> hey, that's good. Say, <laughs> so Jack, uh, what sign were you born hmm. under? Well, Don, mine is a peculiar case. I was born over a sign. Over a sign? Yes, Waukegan Clothing Company must vacate. <laughs> no, the, star, the sign's still there. Well, know? then you mean you were born over your father's store. Yes, Don, and the doctor had an awful time getting upstairs. My father grabbed him and tried to sell him a suit. <laughs> and you know, fellas, I was one of the smartest babies you've ever seen, and a great help to my father. Is that so? Why, Don, a minute after I was born, I looked up and said... Doctor, your new suit fits perfectly. You did? Yes, and my father pinched me and said, Quiet, that's his old one. <laughs> what did I know, Don? I was only a baby. You know. Oh, hello, Kenny. Hello, Jack. What's going on? Well, I'll let you in on a secret, Kenny. I was just born. I'm a little baby. Gee, you got cuffs on your diapers. <laughs> hey, that's very clever there. You're pretty smart. Uh, when were you born, Kenny? March the 15th. Oh, you come under Taurus the Bull, the same sign as Phil. Well, mm -hmm. that fits. You both sing, you both have curly hair, and you're both in pictures. Yeah, and we're both lady killers, too. <laughs> oh, you're both lady killers. Huh? Well, Phil is. I just stun him. <laughs> well, tell me, my unconscious Casanova. <laughs> now, how do you go about uh, meeting a young lady? Well, I walk right up to him, and I give him that old Baker personality. Oh, you do, huh? Then I say to her, uh, how's about it, kid? How's about it, kid? What does she say? She says, how's about Vot? <laughs> oh, the exotic type. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you start a conversation, then what happens? She goes her way, and I go to my girl's house. The end. Well, Kenny, you certainly are a Romeo, isn't he, Mary? Yeah, if he ever comes under my balcony, I'll give him a flower pot beanie. <laughs> well, Kenny, how about singing your song now before you get crowned? There? All right. Oh, wait a minute, Kenny. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Telegram for Jack Benny. Oh, two of them this time. To take both of you to deliver them? Yes, we're twins. Oh. We were born under the sign of Tippus, the coin. <laughs> well, here's a dime, fellas. Tear it apart. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye. Well, boom, boom. <laughs> you see who these telegrams are from, Mary. Okay. Funny getting two of them at the same time, huh? Uh, look, Jack, this first wire's from your doctor in Waukegan. Oh, good old Doc K. Well, well. Uh, he says, Dear Jack, thanks for the plug you gave me. But your father hasn't paid me yet for your birth 44 years ago. Oh, he hasn't? Well, that's terrible. That's really awful. Well, who's the other wire from? Uh, it's from your father. He says, uh, don't worry about the doctor. He never paid for the suit either. Well, it's a draw. No decision. Sing, Kenny. <laughs>
as the pines of the view. There's an angel's breath beneath your sigh. There's a little devil in your eye. Oh, Rosemary, I love you. I'm always dreaming of you. No matter what I do, I can't forget you. Sometimes I wish that I had never met you. And yet if I should lose you, it would mean my very picture of the same name, <laughs> sung by Kenny Baker. By the way, Kenny, I was on the Maxwell House Good News program last Thursday night, and uh, you know who else has a beautiful voice? I'm not interested. Well, don't be like that. Now, I heard Alan Jones sing on that same, on that program, and he certainly has a lovely voice. You know, he's a high baritone. Well, I don't work for buttons. <laughs> I didn't say you did. All I say is Alan Jones has marvelous range, poise, and feeling. Or when he takes those high notes, he thrills you. Go on. He forgot more about singing than I'll ever know. <laughs> All right, you win. Say, Jack, I heard you on the Maxwell House show the other night. You did? Yeah. <laughs> they sure kicked you around, didn't they? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, fellas. It's the last time I'll ever try to help anybody out, especially Robert Taylor. I went there just to fix up their show, that's all. Why, did they send for you, doctor? <laughs> no, they didn't send for me. I went there of my own free will, and I did all right, too. Uh, did you get paid for it? Well, Bob Taylor gave me a pound of coffee. <laughs> and then he sold me a percolator for $10. <laughs> a $10 percolator? Have you got it with you? No, on my way out, Frank Morgan picked my pocket. It's a fine program. You know, fellas, I thought Bob Taylor made some very sarcastic remarks about my looks, especially my high forehead. Taylor should talk, you know. Oh, yeah? He's got more hair on his eyelashes than you have on your whole head. Oh, he has, huh? They tickle, too. <laughs> well, let's forget Robert Taylor. We've got other things to do here. Say, Jay. Yes, Kenny? I like the girl on that program that does baby snooks. You know, Virginia Bruce. Virginia Bruce? That's Fanny Bryce. Virginia Bruce. Well, they look alike. Fanny, they don't look anything alike. Virginia Bruce is a blonde, and Fanny Bryce is a Latin from Manhattan. <laughs> she was born in the Bronx. She was? Yeah. Say, I wonder what sign she was born under. Bismarck the Herring. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're certainly full of astrology tonight, huh? Yes, Jack, and with all this talk, we've overlooked the luckiest sign of all. Gee, Don, what sign is that? Jello the dessert. Oh, for shame. How could we have forgotten that? Tell me, Don, what does that sign mean? Well, it means that Jello has six favorable stars strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. How interesting. Continue. And uh, for people born under this sign, the best days to eat Jello are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and twice on Sunday. We must remember that, students, one and all. <laughs> and now, folks, going from Jell-O to our next feature attraction, tonight we will bring you a drama of the United States Navy, our version of that thrilling Warner Brothers first national picture, Submarine D-1. Oh, boy, sailors. <laughs> Quiet. Now, I will play the part of Butch O'Benny, chief petty officer, as portrayed by Pat O'Brien on the screen. As tough a sailor as ever choked on a seasick pill. 
The members of my crew will be Sock Harris. Aye, aye, sir. Slim Wilson. Aye, aye, sir. Lucky Baker. Here, teacher. And fine sailor. Uh, hey, Jack, am I going to be in this? Yes, Mary. Your name is Slug Livingston. <laughs> We're short of men, so you'll have to be a sailor, too. Okay, but I'm going to put a screen around my hammock. Uh. <laughs> Well, now I guess we're just about set. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, Rochester, Rochester. Is your butler going to be in this, Jack? Yes, we've got to have a full crew, so I told him to come down and help me out. Here I am, boss. Now, look, Rochester, let me explain your part. You're a member of a submarine crew. Submarine? Yes. Is that one of them boats that dunks? Yes, it's an undersea boat. It travels far beneath the surface of the ocean. I ain't going to be on it. Now, Rochester, I promise you $10. Don't you want to make $10? Not if I have to send a whale to the bank with it. <laughs> now, look, Rochester, there's nothing to worry about. It's only going to last five minutes. I can drown in three. <laughs> well, it's only a play, so go over in the corner and put on your uniform. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Submarine D-1 will sail into action immediately after the next number. All set, Phil? Yep. How do you like my sailor suit? All right, Bill, but it's awfully big. Gee, there's room enough in that suit for you and Kenny. Where do you think I am? <laughs> oh, yes, I see that lump. Play, Phil. Get out of there, Kenny. What's the matter? You Do Something to Me, played by Phil Harris. And now, folks, for our epic of the sea, our tribute to the United States Navy, Submarine D-1. Oh, Jack, look, I got my sailor suit on. How do you like it? Fine, but take off that silver fox cape. This is going to be an informal cruise. <laughs> now, the scene opens on the deck of Submarine D-1, anchored off the Navy Yard in New London, Connecticut. As the action begins, Chief Petty Officer Butch O'Benny is addressing his crew. Curtain. Music. Now listen, men. Before we shove off, there's a few words I want to say to you. You're not in the battleship Navy now. You're in the submarine Navy. And you'll find it a lot tougher. You understand? Aye, aye, aye sir. sir. You know, this ain't going to be no joyride. Being in the service is a man's job. Oh, Chief. What is it, slug? Some... <laughs> Somebody in this crew stole my lipstick. Somebody stole your lipstick? Gosh, I thought it was candy. <laughs> I want discipline in this crew. There'll be no more stealing. Hello, Popeye. Am I late? <laughs> Popeye? Listen, Harris, that's an insult to your superior officer. Step forward and salute. Aye, aye, sir. What are you doing? I'm saluting you. Well, unless your nose itches, you're insulting me again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> now, unless... Now, men, just one final word before we shove off. We're headed for San Diego by the way of the Panama Canal. This is a new submarine. We're out to make a record. Now, there might be a lot of danger ahead, so keep on your toes. One little slip on the part of any one of you might mean death to us all. Hey, Chief. What? Make way for a deserter. <laughs> Get back there, Rochester. All right, men, down below. All right, All right, sir. Hey, Wilson. Yes, Chief? Stay right in the middle of the boat. I don't want any tipping. <laughs> On the double, men, we're off to Panama. Two weeks later, we pick up submarine D-1 off the coast of Panama, cruising 40 feet below the surface. Well, men, we should be in Panama before night. Everything is okay so far. We've had very few delays. Hey, uh, Chief, Chief. What is it, Wilson? Something seems to be wrong. We're slowing down. Slowing down? Darn those sharks. They're hitching rides again. <laughs> shoo! Shoo! Scat! Shoo! <laughs> Go away. Oh, why don't you let them have a little fun? I don't mind them bumming a ride, but I don't want them biting their initials in the rudder. <laughs> anyway, Slug, keep looking through that periscope and see if all is clear ahead. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, Rochester, is supper ready? Oh, but the apple pie. The apple pie? Where's that? I put it out the window to cool. <laughs> oh. Well, never mind. We'll be in Panama in a couple of hours. And we can eat there. Hey, Chief, Chief. What is it, Slug? There's a ship cruising directly ahead of us. There is? Can you make out the name? It's the Albany Night Boat. <laughs> the Albany Night Boat? Yeah, one of us must be lost. Well, it can't be us. We've been heading due south for two weeks. Hey, where are you going, Baker? Up on deck for a walk. You can't do that. We're 40 feet below the surface. That's all right. I got my rubbers on. <laughs> it's a fine crew. Oh, Harris. Aye, aye, sir. Rig out forward planes, ship steering from bridge to conning tower, and check air on manifold. What does that mean? I don't know. I saw it in the picture. <laughs> well, do it yourself. Aye, aye, sir. I mean, get out of here. Oh, slug. Go. <laughs> Don't leave that periscope. Hey, what's that? A seahorse just went by. <laughs> a seahorse? Hmm? Yeah, and he's got a sign on his back. What does it say? Santa, need or bus. <laughs> oh, well, I hope he makes it. Full speed ahead. We'll give him a race. Oh, Chief, Chief. What is it, Wilson? Things look pretty bad. We're running out of gas. Hmm, this submarine uses more gas than my Maxwell. What do we do now? Look, Chief, there's a gas station right ahead of us. A gas station underwater? Here, look. Well, what do you think of that? Yep, there it is. Neptune and Cohen. <laughs> gas, oil, and sandwiches. Go down on all runners. Reverse rear engine. We're stopping for fuel. Help me out with this diving suit so I can get out and get some gas. But, Chief, we're at the bottom of the ocean. When you open that door, a lot of water will come in. Well, we need water, too. Open up. Aye, aye, sir. Gee, it's hard to walk down here. Hmm, look at these strange fish. Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> Pardon me, folks. An electric eel just bumped into me. Hmm. Oh, here's the gas station. I wonder where the attendant is. Oh, there he is. Hello there. Hello, stranger. <laughs> Welcome to Saltwater Junction. Why, Slapperman, since when have you been running a gas station at the bottom of the ocean? I've been here for two months, but I'll have to go back soon. Why? How long can a man hold his breath? <laughs> well, tell me, do you do any business here? Why, certainly, Jack. Submarines pass here every ten minutes. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Jack, am I doing a great business? I'm cleaning up. Look, I got eight gas pumps. Eight gas pumps? How do you handle them all? I got an octopus helping me. An octopus? Where is he now? Next door, getting a manicure. 
Oh, uh, Clep, I'm in a hurry. I need some gas for my submarine. How much do you want, sailor? Fill her up. The government's paying for it. Tell me, Slap, is your wife here with you? She was, but I had to send her away. Oh, she didn't like it here, huh? Well, she was all right at first, but one day she hung out the wash. And what happened? She went crazy waiting for it to dry. Oh, that's too bad. Say, I see you got a little restaurant here, too. What kind of sandwiches do you serve? Well, we got sponges, watercress, and seaweed. Oh. Well, give me a seaweed on rye. I'll have a cup of coffee, too. You want it with cream or cod liver oil? I want cream. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Hey, what, what's the matter there? There's that electric eel again. <laughs> you know, he's my best customer. I charge his batteries. <laughs> well, Slap, I've got to get going. If I make Panama by tonight, I'll break a record. Now, wait a minute, Jackie. Stick around. I'll take you to a nightclub and introduce you to the most beautiful mermaids you ever saw. I'm sorry, Slap, but I can't let the Navy down. Ah, yeah, you should see those mermaids. They entertain, they sing, and one of them is very tantalizing. Oh, yeah? What does she do? You should see her put on a fin dance. <laughs> Say, that sounds all right. By golly. I think I'll stay at that. Listen to that music. The nightclub is opening already. Look that settles it. I'm going to stay. Wait till I tell my crew. Drop anchor, men. We're going to tie up here for the night. Aye, aye, sir. Mermaids. Say, this is going to be good. Oh, Phil. Phil. Yes, chief. Come on out. I know where there's some mermaids. What do you think I got on my lap, a flounder? <laughs> oh, he always beats me to it. Take it, Wilson. This will be continued next Sunday night. Will the submarine get to Panama? Will Butch get a date with a mermaid? Will it stop raining in California? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. Play, Phil. Do you want to give your family something new and swell for dessert? Well, here's a timely suggestion. It's a Washington's birthday special called Layer Red Cherries and Bananas, a beautiful and tempting combination of cherry jello and fruit. And here's the way to make it. Dissolve one package of cherry jello and pour it over one cup of canned white cherries arranged in a mold. Then slice one banana on top of the jello and chill until firm. Serve it with the whipped cream, and boy, you have a swell dessert. A layer of delicious cherries, a layer of creamy bananas molded inside crimson cherry jello. It looks grand, and it tastes every bit as good as it looks. For cherries and bananas combine perfectly with the luscious, extra rich fruit flavor of jello. So be sure and try this tempting new dessert for Washington's birthday. Order some jello tomorrow. number of the 21st program on the new Jello series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time, when we will bring you further adventures of Submarine D-1. What thrills? What suspense? Oh, but... What is it, Slug? Are there any he mermaids? No. Good night, folks. <laughs> Baker appears on the Jello program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. The tune Who Knows is from the squad of the picture Rosalie. This is the National Broadcasting Company.